one of the hypotheses as to why fish are actually attracted to these structures is that before humans started putting things into the ocean, the highest concentration of floating objects would have likely been just outside of mouths of really big rivers. Logs, tree branches, things like that. This theory states that these migratory fish passing by could have learned to associate the floating objects with areas of higher productivity and could be a reason as to why fish are attracted to these floating objects. So a fad is a fish aggregation device. Um, this is typically a man-made buoy or some type of floating structure um, that builds off of the concept that a lot of fish, specifically pelagic or open ocean fish, like to congregate around floating structure. The first deployment went really well. We built the anchor blocks, we used a crane truck to put them in the water at the marina, used a couple divers and several lift bags to raise the anchor blocks up to the surface so that we could just use one of our pangas to tow them out to the drop site. Once the line is fully flaked out onto the surface of the ocean, we make the connection between the anchor chain, which is right at the end of the rope, and the anchor block. Put a buoy on the other side so you can track the tail end, uh, pull a rip cord, and it drops the anchor block. The anchor block, which was 6,000 pounds, took almost five minutes to fall to the bottom. That was in August of 2017. Building off of that question of how can we use fads as conservation tools, um, putting the first fad in was very much an experiment in and of itself, where we're testing this new design, looking at what the fads are gonna attract in this area. So once we kind of got the design set, then we immediately went into our, our sort of monitoring phase. So we've been running weekly camera surveys on the fads just to get an idea of what uses structure in the open ocean around here and how that changes across the seasons. We are running multi-beam sonar surveys around the fads. That's going to look at the sort of wider scale biomass accumulation around these structures. The sonar surveys are giving an idea of if lower trophic levels and if the plankton base and the squid and the shrimp are also being attracted to these open ocean structures. With the recent visit of the research vessel Aleutia, we were able to run a light trapping project around the fads. So the idea with that is we want to see what we're seeing on the sonar surveys. So that's collecting data down to 250 meters deep and extending a kilometer away from the fat in any direction. The light trap design that we used uh, kind of employed two different types of light traps. So with the tube trap, we're able to trap the fish and the squid and the shrimp. Uh, with the quatrefoil trap, we're able to trap the invertebrates, so the little plankton and isopods and amphipods and polychaete worms. There have been estimates over the past couple years that 100,000, give or take, new fads go into the water every year. On a scale more comparable to what we're doing, there's a lot of anchored fads in deep water in the Caribbean that are used to promote recreational fisheries. So a lot of countries' governments actually pay for fads to be deployed to support the sport fishing industry, um, to get charter captains in place to reliably be able to catch the pelagic fish. to take these light traps that essentially use light as their bait source as opposed to uh, an actual bait, take them down the anchor line of the fad and use the submersible to attach them to the anchor line at varying depths from the surface to the bottom at about 600 meters deep. Control, control, Lydia. 
And that's giving us an idea of what creatures are attracted to this structure throughout the entire water column. So not just at the top where the buoys are, but all the way down to the bottom. I never expected to see that anchor block again when we dropped it a year and a half ago. Um, and to see it sitting on the bottom in, in perfect condition with our initials sketched into the concrete was, was pretty funny. Every night we'd split into two teams. We'd have one team going down the fat tether to the bottom at about 570 meters, deploying light traps along the way. But because of the limited space on the front of the sub, we'd actually have to deploy one light trap right underneath the buoys at about 30 feet down by hand. The second time we'd go out would be to collect that gear, and that would be a little less pleasant because it would be completely pitch black about 10 o'clock at night. We always sort of joke about going out and hanging around the fad at nighttime. Um, obviously you're in blue water, so you're kind of flashing your light around hoping to not see anything. Um, and we never did. We, we dropped down, you know, pretty quick dive, collect the light trap. Uh, the most intimidating part of that process is as you ascend, you do a safety stop at about 15 feet down and you're just suspended in complete blackness, holding what's essentially a massive alarm. We pull those light traps up in the Zodiac, bring them back to the deck, and then immediately start to sort what we've caught. So as soon as the light traps are on board, we start to sort of wash all of the organisms out of them into little trays. We just try and keep them organized by trap as different traps have different lights in them and we're at different depths. Yeah, we, we had a couple of nice surprises with what we pulled up in the traps. Um, we got some samples of uh, squid and shrimp, which we think are likely pretty important um, components of the pelagic food web. With the Aleutia expedition, we were able to invite a number of collaborators down to work on these projects with us, uh, two of which are Ollie Shipley from Stony Brook University and Eve Moore from the Florida Museum of Natural History. So not only were these uh, light trapping projects going towards the actual FAD-centric investigation, but we were able to get stable isotope samples that Ollie will be running that'll go into a big pelagic food web uh, project and we're also able to get a lot of samples for the Florida Museum that Eve has taken back uh, when she left the Aleutia and will be slowly processing at the Florida Museum. Before we started this project, most of us had never been in the water with you know, a pelagic migratory fish or any of these pelagic sharks. So just getting out there every day and, and seeing something new and usually big is pretty exciting. A couple of the goals moving forward are to really ramp up our fish tracking. Um, so this will entail deploying satellite tags and acoustic tags on uh, different sport fish and shark species in the area that are using our fads um, to look at not only how these fish are using the space around these structures, but also how this might impact their longer term migrations.